morning. I'll be reading uh, from the New, uh, New American Standard Bible, uh, Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. Praying at the same time for us as well, that God will open up to us a door for the word so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I have also been imprisoned, that I may make it clear in the way that I ought to proclaim it. Conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. Your speech must always be with grace, as though seasoned with salt, so that you will know how you should respond to each person. Good morning. As we have made our way through the the year talking about love, we've gotten down to this last quarter and we've begun dedicating ourselves to looking at the idea of loving the lost. And so, ironically, I find myself, I think, saying the word love fewer times than in uh, previous lessons during the year and and really uh, kind of focusing on the actual idea of, of loving people, uh, I think less than, uh, than at other points during the year, but everything that we've done in this quarter has kind of been predicated on all the stuff that, that we've done up to this point, that God loves us. And that's where we started in the first quarter, God is love. And, and we spent the next quarter then talking about our love for God and what that looks like and how that, that molds our lives and how it forms everything that we do and then how we as a body of believers love one another in the third quarter um, kind of kind of builds on that still and then so once we've laid all of that foundation all that groundwork of love then we find ourselves kind of primed and ready okay now what do we do with that what we're we're a, a loving bunch we we got a lot of love for you know put into us by God built into us by God we've We've responded to that love by loving him. We, we love one another now. Do we just sit here and hold on to that? Do we just sit here and, and kind of bask in that glow of love that, that we feel with one another and, and mutually with one another and those kind of things? Or, or do we take it and do something with it? And that's where we find ourselves in this quarter, really kind of building upon that idea of the fact that we do love one another and we are loved by God and and. What do we do with that? Well, we go tell other people about it. We, uh, we introduce them to the God that loves them. We talk to them about what it means for them to love God and for them to love others. And we demonstrate that by the way that we interact with them and by the things that we do for them and, and around them. So, um, so I feel like, uh, I don't know, it's just been a little bit, a little bit weird after talking so much about love for three full quarters and then here when it's we're kind of in the wrapping up of this it it feels like I'm not talking about love enough Um, but we've laid the foundation and love is the the predicate for all that we do uh, in these lessons that we're looking at uh, when it comes to sharing the gospel with other people and so uh, so with that in mind uh we, we look at our scripture reading for the day and, and look at the idea of opening doors for the word, as Paul put it in Colossians chapter 4. And so the question that I want you to think about as we go through today's lesson is, what is my role? What part do I have to play in sharing the gospel with others? Because as we've, as we've studied in the past, there are various roles within the church, there are various functions uh, for everybody within the church and if we all had the same role if we all had the same function if we all had the same job then you know there wouldn't be uh, th- that wouldn't be as great as it sounds uh, because there'd be a lot of things that got left undone there'd be a lot of things that weren't being accomplished if everybody's talent was the same if everybody's uh, job description was the same uh, then there'd be a lot of things that needed to be done that wouldn't get done And so we all have various talents, we all have various strengths, we all have various abilities, we all have various interests. And 
as we think about what those strengths and interests and abilities are, there's going to be something that's suited for us. There's going to be some job that needs to be done within the kingdom. There's going to be some aspect of telling other people about Christ that, that fits our interest and our ability and our talent. And so the question that we each need to, to address is what is my role? What, is, what part do I have to play in sharing the gospel? And as we look at these things today, I think you'll find a spot for yourself. You'll find something that you can do that, uh, that is purposeful, that is meaningful, that is important in sharing the gospel with other people. And um, if, if you'll keep that question in the front of your mind as we go through these things, then I think we'll each find something that we can do. And so this morning, we'll just kind of break down the parts of this passage in Colossians chapter 4 that was read And we'll look at kind of each section by part and talk about how important and necessary each part of that passage is. So let's look first at the idea of being devoted to prayer. Paul says it right off the bat, verse 2, devote yourselves to prayer. Um, And it's interesting, we devote ourselves to the things that are most important to us, right? I mean, if you made a list of the things that are important to you, then I think... And, and then made another list of how you spend your time, whether it on a daily or weekly or monthly basis, I think you'd fi- find a lot of alignment between those things, right? There'd be uh, a list of things that are important, and here's how I spend my time, and we'd, we'd find that there's a lot of crossover between those lists. And so we devote ourselves to the things that matter the most to us, that make the biggest difference in our lives, things like family, your friendships, your careers, p- professions, your hobbies, All of those things are going to be things that you would state, that you would identify as being important, and then those things are going to be the things that take up the most of your time as well. And Paul says, devote yourself to prayer. What he's saying is make prayer important. Make sure that prayer makes it onto that list of things that you say are the most important things in your life. Devote yourself to it. And, and he says this in other places as well. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 17, you all can quote that passage. Pray without ceasing, right? And, and they're getting across the idea, the notion that prayer is so important to us that it needs to be a constant part of our lives. Not that we uh, start a, a prayer and, and it never ends. That's not what pray without ceasing means, but it, it just means that prayer is so ingrained into our being, so ingrained into our, into our daily lives that it's not, uh, it's not a, a rare thing to, to find yourself in prayer. It's not, it's not a, a thing that you have to um, you know, pencil into your, your calendar and schedule it in, and, and if you forget to look at your calendar, you forget to pray. That's not what we should be doing. We should be so ingrained and so, um, so make prayer such a part of our lives that it just happens constantly throughout the day, constantly from moment by moment we find ourselves uh, praying about various things. Pray without ceasing. And then Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, Paul there says, pray at all times in the Spirit. And so we're going to talk more about the Spirit, uh, I have a feeling, in the coming year, and we'll talk some about uh, the importance of prayer and the relationship between the Spirit and the Spirit the Holy Spirit and prayer and what that means for us. But Paul there includes the Spirit as part of our prayer life. Pray at all times in the Spirit. Uh, Include that thought that the Spirit is part of your prayer life uh, as you are praying. And Paul here in Colossians 4 is saying, devote yourselves to prayer. Make it that important. Make it that meaningful. Um, our, Our first thought there is that we need to be alert in prayer. It should be purposeful specific it should be thoughtful and I really appreciated so much the the Bible class hour when we were able to hear from Cody and and as he was saying some things about prayer it just really uh, I thought man he's he's driving my point home for me as as uh, as he talks about how important prayer is to the work that they are doing in England and you know it's not a trivial or a trite or a um, a formulaic thing anytime we have a missionary come or or speak to us about the work that they're doing and what's always the first thing they ask for they always ask for prayer first right and that's not they don't learn that in mission school as like before you ask them for money ask them for prayer to make them think that you're spiritual right that's not what they do that that's really that important prayer is the thing that we can do for the work that cody and kelsey are involved in 
that is at the front of the list. It's the most important thing that we can do for them. And it's the most important thing that we can do in spreading the gospel here in McPherson as well. And in your own personal, private uh, ministry or life, uh, as you interact with others, prayer is that important. Paul said, devote yourselves to it and keep alert in it. Be purposeful, specific, thoughtful. And what was it that Cody asked us for? He said he's been praying for six men. He doesn't know who they are yet. He thinks he's found maybe two of them who will be an answer to his prayer. But from the very beginning, he's been praying that God would, uh, would send him six men that he, could, that he could mentor, that he could work with, that he could disciple, and that he could turn them into leaders within their own community to go out and reach to the next generation of people. And so Cody is being specific. He's being purposeful. He's being thoughtful in the prayers uh, that he is, he is asking God for, and he's asked us to, to participate with him in that. That's exactly what Paul is doing with the church in Colossae when he's saying, devote yourselves to prayer, and he's saying to them, be specific and thoughtful and purposeful in praying for the work that I'm doing in reaching out to other people. Uh, in the context of this passage this morning, we are to be alert in our prayers, specifically that God will open up to us a door for the word. And so think about interactions that you have with people or that you know you're going to have with someone and pray about that interaction, pray about that opportunity, and then don't be surprised when that door opens. Don't be surprised when there's a moment in time when that door opens up and all of a sudden there's a question that's been asked or there's a, there's a situation that you find yourselves in where where it would be appropriate to bring up spiritual matters. And now I've been praying for this person. I've been praying for the opportunity. I've been purposeful. I've been thoughtful about what uh, I want to see happen. And, and now there's an opportunity. Don't freeze. Don't, uh, don't let that opportunity pass by without seizing that opportunity that God has placed before us. And we'll think uh, maybe more about that as we go through other points of the lesson. But pray for those specific moments and then be ready to step through that door when it opens. And then I think uh, it's a good thing that Paul, listen to me complimenting Paul on the way he wrote Colossians, but uh, I think it's a good thing that Paul here includes the idea of thanksgiving, being thankful in our prayers, um, not just being people that pray when we need something, not just being people that pray, you know, I, God, I thought of another situation that I need your help in, and so here's my request, but rather being thankful about the things that we pray uh, pray for as well. And, and that got me thinking about how, how should we be thankful? And here's a thought about how we should be thankful in our prayers. And, and the first thing is to remember. Remember what God has done in the past, whether it be personal successes, personal victories, personal blessings, or whether it be times when you've prayed for open doors in the past and God has opened those doors uh, and allowed you the opportunity to talk to somebody about him. Remember those things that God has done in the past to demonstrate that he hears your prayers and that he responds to those prayers. And then as you remember, reflect. What, what did I do in response to the way that God answered my prayer? I prayed a specific thing in a specific way and God, God blessed me by opening that door. How did then I respond? Did I go through that door the way that I should? Did I respond in the way that I should? Is there something that I could have done differently that would have had a, a better impact on that scenario or that situation? And then learn. Learn how to be more effective. You know, learn, learn what you can and can't say. I appreciate it again, Cody, this morning saying, you know, he's, they're having to learn uh, a new language. You don't expect to go to England and have to learn a new language. But if he's going to be effective in reaching out to, to Muslim refugees, he's not going to be able to always speak to them in English. And if he learns their home language, then what a message that sends to them about how important it is to him that he be able to communicate the truth to them. And, and so what can we learn about how to be more effective and what confidence can we gain from thinking about what God has done for us in the past? So it's not just, uh, not just being thankful because we want to give God a nice thank you note for what he has done for us. That's, that's a good thought. But it's being thankful from the, the standpoint of, of reflecting on what God has done and, and what can we do in response to what God has done for us in the past so that we can be more effective in handling and dealing with the blessings that he gives us in the future. So there is a purpose to that thanksgiving beyond just expressing thanks. Although that is important, 
we want it to go beyond that as well. And so we need to be people that devote ourselves to prayer. That's the first thing that Paul asks for uh, when he wants the church in Colossae to, uh, to come alongside him and help or to, to be with him in the ministry that he's going out to do. The first request he makes of them is that they pray. And that should be our first step as well when we think about uh, how we can spread the gospel, whether it be here locally or whether it be in foreign lands. Paul next says that, uh, that he wants to be able to speak forth. He says, uh, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving, praying at the same time for us as well that God may open up to us a door for the word so that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ. That idea of speaking forth, and, and, and that is, it, it just made me think about what does it mean to speak forth? Well, I think it means to say what needs to be said in the way it should be said to those that need to hear it said at the moment that God opens the door for it to be said. That's what it means to speak forth. There's, there's more than just, you know, God make me your mouthpiece, and, and when the time is right, you'll put the words in my mouth so that I can... Uh, you know, I don't have to think about it, God. You can just, you can just, uh, you know, I'll be your megaphone, and you can just speak through me. That's that's not really what it is. Paul is asking them to pray for those open doors, so that when those doors open, he has the ability to speak. And so we're not praying just for the opportunity, but we're praying for our response to that opportunity, our response uh, it being that we can teach the gospel of Christ to people that need to hear it. And so what specifically was Paul wanting to be able to speak? Well, he wants to speak the mystery of Christ. And, and we make a lot of that word mystery. You know, mystery in our vernacular, in our way of thinking is, uh, you know, it's like a whodunit. It's something that you need to figure out. It's something that, um, it's something that is going to take at least 90 minutes or I guess, I guess maybe 60 minutes if you're Matlock and, and you can get it done in, in a one-hour episode. But... You have this mystery that needs to be figured out, but that's not really what it means in the gospel. In the gospel, the mystery is simply God's word as he's revealing it. And, and a mystery, in, in one sense, is something that uh, just hasn't been fully revealed yet. But the mystery of God was revealed in Christ. And so we're talking about a mystery that has been revealed. It is a mystery that's been solved. And we know the outcome, we know the ending of that mystery. The ending of that mystery is salvation through Jesus Christ. And so Paul wants to be able to speak that mystery, to be able to tell people about what he knows the outcome of that story is. And the outcome of that story is Jesus Christ. So what is it that we're supposed to speak? Well, we're supposed to speak the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the gospel story. We're supposed to speak the full story of God's plan for the redemption of mankind from their sin. We talk about sin and how it entered the world in the garden and how it affected God's creation throughout all time and, and how it affects us personally and individually. And we talk about the remedy for sin in the person of Jesus Christ. We talk about the plan from the beginning to include all people as part of God's kingdom. That it's not an exclusionary kingdom but that it is an inclusionary kingdom it's one that wherein god wants everyone to be a part of that kingdom we just need to answer his call in the way that he presents it and so we are speaking forth the mystery of the gospel of christ and we need to pray also not just that we have the opportunity to speak speak that mystery but that we are able to to speak it clearly. Paul says in verse 4, in order that I may make it clear in the way I ought to speak. And, and often we don't say anything because we're afraid of saying the wrong thing. And that's a real fear. And I've, I've dealt with that myself. I, I have missed opportunities in the past, moments in time when I can look back and, and clear as a bell I can I can see that there was an opportunity and I froze in that moment and I didn't say anything at that moment because I didn't know what to say or I thought if I do say something it'll be the wrong thing and so instead of making an error of saying the wrong thing I made the error of saying nothing at all and that's too often the case for us it's too often the thing that uh, that that inhibits our ability to spread the gospel because we don't say anything at all but isn't it interesting to you that the Apostle Paul, who we would think of as being 
perhaps the second greatest preacher that ever lived, right? I mean, Jesus had to be the greatest preacher that ever lived, but wouldn't you think that Paul is the second greatest? And Paul is asking for prayers that he would be able to speak the mystery of the, of the gospel of Christ in a way that it would be clear to those who hear it. Paul had the same fear that we have. Paul had the same, the same worry that when he spoke to people about Christ that maybe his words would get in the way and maybe his words wouldn't be the right words that they needed to hear. And maybe he'd say the wrong thing that would drive them away rather than draw them near. What was it that Paul told, told the church in Corinth that when I was with you, I was with you in much fear and trembling? And so this fear that we have of sometimes maybe saying the wrong thing is something that is dealt with even by the greatest gospel preacher that ever lived. So who are we to think that we should be free of that fear, that we shouldn't ever have to deal with that fear? We deal with it by praying about it, we deal with it by preparing for it. We deal with it by committing to walk through those doors that God opens for us. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, Paul writes there, he says, For God has not given us a spirit of timidity. That's what it is when we, when we freeze, when we fail to speak. When that door of opportunity opens before us and we, we stand back and we wait. and We don't go through that door. That's timidity. It's being scared. God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but he has given us a spirit of power and love and discipline. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord. Paul dealt with that same fear. He dealt with that same temptation to be timid, but he prayed about it and he prepared himself. And when the opportunities arose, he stepped through that door and he spoke boldly. In the name of Christ we need to have that same prayer we need to have that same attitude so first we pray about it next we prepare ourselves to speak about it and finally we conduct ourselves with wisdom the same characteristic of alertness that guides our prayers that that thoughtfulness that purposefulness that that specificity with which we pray that same attitude needs to guide our actions. We need to be purposeful and intelligent and thoughtful in the way that we interact with other people, in the way that we uh, conduct ourselves around them. And he talks about two different areas. He says, first, in our deeds, he says, conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders. And so in our deeds, this is wisdom in action. And we need to be people that are doing those things that reflect Christ. We need to be doing things that show people what's important to us. And, and again, I'll, I'll talk about Cody because he was just with us this morning uh, in class. And, and what is it that he's doing? Well, he's spending time with people that nobody else is willing to spend time with. Can you imagine being uh, a refugee seeker in a, in a foreign country where you barely understand the language and and many of the people that you come into contact with that are from that host country don't want you there. And so the people that already are intimidating to you and, and already don't look like you do and don't talk like you do and don't dress like you do, they don't want you there. But then you find somebody who welcomes you into, your, into their home. They let you spend time with their family and their children. What kind of an impact does that make on somebody in the name of Christ? Conduct yourself with wisdom. Do the things that reflect Christ to those that need to learn about Christ. Those things make our message more meaningful. They demonstrate our own faith in the things that we're trying to teach. And then on the, the flip side of that, we don't do the things that detract from our message. What was it that, that Cody was not doing? Well, on days that there are possible conflicts or possible difficulties, he removes himself from those situations. They don't go to those parts of the city where things are going to be tense on any given day. And so our lives should be consistent with our message. If we're going to preach messages, uh, a message of peace through Christ, then we should be living that peaceful life. If we're going to be preaching a message of, of a God that loves us, then we should be demonstrating love in the things that we do. We should make sure that our deeds match our words. And then finally, 
conduct yourselves with wisdom, not just in your deeds, but in your words. He says, uh, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned as it were with salt, so that you may know how you should respond to each person. We need to speak about spiritual matters today that may open the door tomorrow to speak about more spiritual matters, about matters regarding salvation. And so, uh, again, with the example that we just had this morning, Cody uh, getting to talk to, to people who have a different faith about the way that they pray and not, not lending agreement to the God that they pray to or, or the things even that they pray about, but being able to talk to them about how, uh, how impressive it is in their dedication to the prayer life that they have. And building bridges there through the things that they're able to talk about. So talking about spiritual matters, but doing so in a way that later will open up doors of opportunity to talk about even more spiritual matters. We need to speak with grace, seasoned with salt, so that we know how to respond when that door does open, uh, is the way that Paul wrote it there in, first, uh, in Colossians chapter 4. And so all of these things come together then in, in this passage that we devote ourselves to prayer, uh, that, that we, um, what was point number two? That we speak forth and that we conduct ourselves with wisdom uh, in the way that Paul has directed us to here in this passage. And all of those are that foundation for us to be able to spread the gospel to those who have not heard it. And so the question then that we began with is what is my role that, that, that I have to play in this process. What can I do? Is it possible for me to pray? Well, every one of us should be able to check that box. We all should be able to play that part. We all should be able to come up with uh, a time during our day when we can pray for the spread of the gospel. Is it my role to be able to speak forth the gospel of Christ? That's scary. I know for some that that's, the, that's kind of the the line that, that is drawn there where I just don't have that ability to talk to others, especially strangers. Well, I understand that. And, and I understand that it can be uh, scary, that it can be daunting. But somebody here has that ability to speak to strangers. And if you can pray for them, and if you can get them here, we'll find somebody that can talk to them about the gospel. But you know people that I don't know, and, and you know people that the elders don't know, and you know people that Don doesn't know, and there are people that, that are willing to talk to others about Christ we just need to know where to find them and that's where you can help we need to conduct ourselves with wisdom we need to go out into this community and they need to see us serving they need to see us loving they need to see us being hospitable they need to see us standing up for what's right and standing against things that are wrong we need to conduct ourselves with wisdom and we need to be speaking in ways that draw attention to the gospel of Christ so what role do you have to play? Well, there are lots of roles that need to be filled. And you have strengths, you have abilities. You have the ability to grow into any one of those roles. So we all can make sure that we are working in this regard. The final question under our call to action today is where are we lacking? I don't ever want uh, a lesson like this to, to be anything other than an encouragement for us to do more than we're already doing. It's, it's not my intent to make you feel like that, uh, well, Jason thinks we're not doing anything, or Jason thinks that we're just striking out completely here. That's not it at all. I want you to hear the things that Paul had to say in this passage today, and I want you to be encouraged to do more, to think about how we can further impact and affect the spread of the gospel in our community and, and in, in broader ways, even into the world. What is it that we can do more of that will draw more people into the kingdom of God? And if you can think of some way in which we're lacking, whether it be that we need to pray more, or that we need to have more interactions with people like Cody, or we need to, uh, we need to have more speakers here, or we need to, to talk more about missions and evangelism, we need to have more classes or prepare ourselves or or pair up with one another, whatever it is, where are we lacking so that we could be more effective in the spread of the gospel and the furtherance of God's kingdom? So this morning, the lesson is yours. If, if you don't know what else to do, start by praying. Start by praying because that's the most important thing we can do to begin with. But that is what's going to lead us into to other opportunities and it's going to open doors for us as we move forward. 
If you have any need this morning, my prayer is that you will come and make that need known as we stand and sing.